Hello everyone. The update 6.5 patch notes are out, so I figured I'd do a very quick video and uh, let's go through them and we'll see what's new and what's uh, shiny and what's upcoming. We have more collection book pages, so uh, more of an incentive to purchase uh, certain chips and commanders and other things. Uh, this one gives us a bit of silver, a bit of XP, so that's nothing huge. But uh, something good for beginners to get them started and uh, for new players. We have another one which gives us universal blueprints and a, a camo for a tier 5 premium cruiser. Okay, that's not something I've heard of before, so I'm going to actually have to take a look what that ship is. Maybe it's part of the upcoming patch. And again, uh, nothing really. Yeah, so one of the required ships is actually that one. So uh we have level and you need level 25 and you may need the new york port i'm not sure where you get that from but a couple of things here in combination that get you a special camo and usually the soviet camos don't look completely terrible next up we've got uh portraits and an epic commander and it's a lot of premiums except for the shokaku so if you've got a bunch of these uh, of these premiums around then uh, you may have you may have a good shot at getting some free stuff out of it. Honestly, that's what I personally enjoy about these, because you know I have so many ships already at this point from all the years that uh, it just adds up. Uh, next up, uh, portrait. Yeah, same thing. Uh, Epic Commander plus uh, plus portrait frames, and we do need a bunch of premiums or a couple of the destroyers. So it, it, the Epic Commander, and honestly. I think this is a great way of doing it because the epic commander for me is much more valuable for a play, especially for a newer player than the special portrait frame because you know that's just fluff that's just like a visual whereas the uh and you get the, the commanders for a single item so if you've got if you get yourself a gnevni which is a tech tree a tier 6 tech tree destroyer you get an epic commander out of that for free and I think that's a really good way of putting it rather than doing it the other way around and giving you the visual fluff for free and then requiring actual you know, work or money spent to get the, the other things. Um, what else? Un unless, the, unless you do need to have Kuznetsov in order to make that happen. I don't know how it works. But anyway, we'll find out. New stuff. Uh, we have a new map, Island of Ice. And uh, I had a quick... I don't know what yet what it looks like. Uh, I had a quick look at the PC map, and it looks like a uh, like a decent domination map. So that would be great, especially that it's tier eight to ten, and uh, we've had uh, what's it called encounter. <laughs> I, I did. Sometimes I just get four or five games in a row just on encounter, and then one epicenter in in cage or something like that. So having a, having another high tier map is great, and especially that tier eight to ten is where a lot of a lot of players eventually settle. And uh, having more maps in these in these tiers is a good thing. Uh, okay, that's where the Mikoyan comes in. It's a fleet shop edition. Well, that's interesting. I think that's the first time I've seen a premium being sold in the fleet shop. So, uh, three hundred fleet tokens is not a, is not a lot. Uh, so that's a uh, that is a uh, yeah that that's in that's a quick and relatively easy to easily obtainable uh, tier 5 premium cruiser which means i already know what i'm going to test next week <laughs> in case i get my hands on this thing early uh new frames and titles okay ah okay we get more more visuals yep yep okay sure i'm gonna I'll move i'll move through that rather quickly not too interested because that is much more my line of work here um tech line additions uh, oh, that's the that's the hybrid uh, the hybrid battleship line. So we're getting three hybrid battleships: uh, the Nebraska, which is a North Carolina hybrid. So uh, think of an uh, think of it as a, as an American Easy, <laughs> sort of. Uh, we've got the Delaware, which is an Iowa, and we get the Louisiana, which is a Monty. Okay, that makes sense. So so they're effectively taking the tier eight, nine, and ten. Uh, all uh, original tech line battleships uh, and replacing the rear half with the flight deck so you get a couple of additional aircraft which means we're probably going to be seeing a lot more aircraft in higher tiers so that might get interesting um, depending on how many aircraft these things actually are getting 
New premium ships, what do we get? Uh, we get a uh, 1941 West Virginia at tier 6. Okay, that's we so interesting. Um, it could be that the... Oh, so th this is... Oh, okay, no, that makes sense. Because the West Virginia that we're having at tier 7 is actually the... Uh, the post pearl refit I would assume then I can't remember but I would assume it is because this is the tier 6 so this would be the uh, the pre Pearl Harbor version of the West Virginia okay makes sense we get um, a tribal class destroyer from Canada at tier 7 we'll see if that's any good we get uh, the Almirante Grau uh, which is a very I hope I pronounced that correctly I haven't actually looked that up yet uh, tier 8 premium so this is this is the De Reuter but with um, as a Pan American, so it's interesting. Going to be interesting to see what ship skills we're getting. But there's definitely some history behind behind that name. Uh, Admiral Schröder, Tier Nine cruiser. Uh, what is this then? Uh, standard displacement up to twenty five thousand tons, and eight three hundred fives. So it's a it's it's a, is it yet another super cruiser at Tier Nine? I am not a massive fan of Tier Nine super cruisers, but uh, we'll, we'll yeah. Uh, not great armor, not great torpedo protection, but uh, the the traditional the traditional setup for a German. We'll see if it's any good. I definitely test that. Uh, Japanese premium battleship. Okay, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. A 1910 design at tier nine. Okay, sure. Uh, we get the Tromp. Another Dutch destroyer. So if that's anything like the Groningen at tier nine and can launch airstrikes, then I'm a, uh, color me interested. And we get a black uh, a black GK and a black Harbin. Okay. And unique camels. Okay. So that's that's purely aesthetics again. That's for Schlieffen. Uh, that's for West Virginia. The only thing I'm interested in is okay. So this is the Tromp. So we can actually see the, the camel looks nice. I like this camel actually. The uh, that looks neat. Looks neat. Uh, so we've got a decent amount. Can't see if these are single or twin guns, but if these are twins, that would be 650s. If they're singles, I have no idea what the Trump can do. So I will find out. Uh, this is the Dyson. Okay, so a 1910 design, definitely a straight bow. Um, well, we'll, f we'll find out what that thing's capable of. And this is the Admiral Schröder. Oh, but looks like your traditional German ship. I'm not sure I can see torpedoes. Uh, hmm. We'll find out again. Could be could be there on the rear. That could be a torpedo launcher. I'm not sure. Uh, we've got the Almirante Grau, which honestly, with all the screaming colors, I can't even see what that thing is capable of. Uh, we've got another camo for the incomparable. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Halloween camo, a little late. Oh, yeah. Another fish camo. <laughs> It looks a little less stupid than the last one, uh, and we've got the, we've got the, yeah, that's not tier seven. Uh, we've got the what was it tier eight, tier nine, yeah, tier eight, tier nine. So this is the this is the hybrid set. So she's got effectively two guns forward. I assume that's it. So six guns, two turrets forward, six guns, and a flight deck. Uh, that was the North Carolina variant. This would be the. Doesn't look like a North Carolina. Oh, oh anyway, uh, that might that would be the Iowa variant, and then the Montana variant might have another turret somewhere, unless it's the exact same thing. Anyway, no, hang on. This is tier. Oh no no this. Oh, it's the other way around. Uh, this this is the tier tier eight. I was about to say that did not look look, look right. This is the tier eight. That's the Nebraska, that's the Iowa here, and this is actually the Monty. Yeah, I was about to say, that doesn't look like. So slight typo here, that's a tier 10, not a tier, eight, tier 7. But yeah, yeah in, uh, interesting. We're, we're gonna see, we're gonna see when, when this comes out. I would assume it's gonna be some form of early access preview thing. We'll find out, and uh, I will be sure to test these as soon as they come out. If I, I, assuming that they have dive bombers, which I can live with. <laughs> Uh, more legendary commanders. <coughs> it's it's getting a little. It's getting a lot, honestly. And uh, yes, I will start for next week. I will start slowly reviewing all the legendary and premium and epic and whatnot premium commanders, and to find out where they fit. 
and what's special about them because honestly I, I've lost track there's so many of them at this point uh, yeah, additional information interaction with blocked players has been improved okay so <clears throat> okay so okay so if you block somebody and they happen to be in your fleet then then they'll they'll not necessarily show show up in the um, you, you're not showing your online status to each other okay bug fixes hmm, I wasn't even aware uh, fix scout plane cooldown okay I, I didn't even know this was a bug but apparently it was uh, that has been fixed could be launched even when a skill was on cooldown uh, this one's interesting auto secondary gun bug so auto secondaries would generally target things wherever they were regardless if there was anything in between and apparently also in smoke screens so that makes <laughs> it enhances the accuracy and realism yeah well it shouldn't be targeting i didn't even, i wasn't aware of that i wasn't aware that secondaries would auto secondaries would um would start targeting things that were in were hidden in smoke screens so yes definitely um that that is intended so you you can't you can't know that someone is behind an island just because your secondaries start popping up or, or that they are in a smoke screen. Yeah, that, that, that makes very much sense. And they fixed something about the whole show. So that's good as well. Now, this is interesting. Remember I said there were going to be more planes in the air now because we're starting to introduce uh, American hybrid carriers. In return, they have, uh, they're have they initiating a comprehensive rework of AA systems. Okay. Uh, aiming to enhance the overall player experience, yeah, yeah. Uh, modification will impact both big and small caliber AA, pro pro improving the effectiveness and realism of AA defenses in the ship. Uh, and there is a link to click here for details, so we shall follow that. So that link is leading us to a spreadsheet and is a little unwieldy to watch this, but uh, apparently this is a Soviet, Japanese and British ships for now. And they have made some changes to a damage and a range. Although honestly, if we're going through it, it looks like almost every almost everything is just buffing or <laughs> slight slightly nerfing small caliber AA. So uh, what I've done is I've actually uh, switched that into a proper spreadsheet, and um, so we can review which ships are most affected by this. And just for, for general readability, I'm making this into portrait. The, uh, the biggest buff, this is all small caliber AA. So the first, is the first column is the old value, second column is the new value, and third column is the delta. Uh, the, the, the Minotaur has gotten a significant small caliber AA buff. Uh, so has the Kremlin. Now Slava as well. Um, and then we're, now we're starting to go be, um, uh, go significantly below 100 points, but uh, ships like Zhao, uh, Indomitable, Izumo, okay, sure. Um, so it looks like mostly the uh, mostly the the Japanese ships have gotten, ex with, uh, with the exception of Slava, Kremlin, and Minotaur, have gotten a pretty decent buff to the small caliber AA, eh? and then we're starting to see see lower and probably less meaningful values. Uh, the, we're seeing a couple of British heavy cruisers here somewhere in the middle. Uh, Neptune as well, got a, but a very minor buff. And uh, a couple of British light cruisers as well here. So generally, most ships have gotten a slight buff to their small caliber AA. And uh, most of it is going to be insignificant. And in fact, uh, the, the Drake has been, has been nerfed in that regard. Okay, sure. Uh, very minor change on on Kiev, Ognevoy, and Udaloy. Not does it. It doesn't matter at all. So th these small values don't matter at all. Uh, the big change here is for uh, for the Minotaur, and uh, to a degree for Kremlin and Slava, and maybe for uh, for the Zhao. But although I still don't think it makes a massive difference. But uh, the the real. What is the impact of this? So if they're continuing with this with this topic here and generally buffing the small caliber AA, small caliber AA is not going to help you prevent incoming strikes. Small caliber AA is making carriers pay for it. So if this continues across the board, and um, I, I am holding my fingers crossed here that the Brit uh, American heavy cruisers are getting an AA buff, because I think that'd be great, because that was one of the things that I just 
came really thought about when I was re-reviewing the line. Uh, what this means in practice is going to be that carriers cannot uh, fly into cannot fly into uh, mutually supportive AA as easily as they can today. Not because they can't do the damage, but uh, because they will lose the planes, which means that potentially wings get taken out that would have previously gotten back. And uh, it's causing a longer cooldown. Plus, the, they run eventually the risk of being deplaned and other things. So it's... I think it's a good change, and given that uh, given that the that we're getting going to see more planes in the air with the with the American hybrids. Now that that said, I'm not a carrier player, so I can't really judge that from the other side. But from my perspective, uh, and I love the Mino, and having a significant AA buff on the Mino. I mean, that thing's been buffed already a lot, and I don't understand why, because that's already one of the, one of the really powerful ships. But uh, getting more more AA on the Mino and more AA in general on a small caliber is not a real big game changer unless they have made changes on how AA targeting is working. And that's something that doesn't say here. It does say that it's an AA system rework. So uh, we'll have to see if there's any change besides just uh, changing the the damage that AA is doing. Because right now AA targeting is fixed on a single wing until it's either destroyed or out of out of range. And then it, and then it's so anything that's dropped its load already is still dragging flak on the way out, which uh, kind of doesn't make sense. So if they've changed that, uh, that might also be quite interesting. But uh, I, I have no further details, so we will see what things are coming. Anyway, I think that was it. And uh, in general, I would say that's a pretty interesting update. Um, new stuff. We get we get new interesting ships of an of a type that we've seen just a couple of times now, and some premiums, and a couple of new premiums that might be interesting. Uh, plus, yeah, free stuff and an AA rework. And uh, so, sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, that's all I got today. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.